Hi there and welcome to our second video on geometric series where we have already covered what the heck a geometric series is and how to apply the sequence in a real world application. But now what do you do when you have to actually sum them up? Well with geometric series we have to worry about both finite and infinite values. We saw that in our introduction series where we did um, one fourth, uh, sorry, one seventh plus uh, 170th plus and so on and so forth and we ended up with a 0.7 repeating or the one-third plus blah 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 and you end up with those values repeating so we've seen it once before let's actually practice them for ourselves so if we have a geometric series versus a sequence so what we're looking at right now on the screen is a sequence 2 comma 4 comma 8 comma 16 but if we have a series just like with arithmetic you add them that's the big difference between a sequence and a series it's the indicated sum so Let's deal with a finite series sum. So that means I know where I'm starting and I know where I'm ending on my n value terms. We have these formulas, wonderful, wonderful formulas for finite series. Uh, if, if you notice the difference between formula one and formula two, it just comes down to what you know. Formula one, you know the last term and formula two, you do not. So again, it comes down to what you know and what you don't know. So let's find the indicated term of the first six terms of 8 plus 4 plus 24.5. So again, if we have our two formulas, what do we know here? Well, we know the n value is going to be 6. We know our ratio we can solve by dividing 14 by 8 and 24.5 by 14. And we know our first term is 8, but we don't know the last term. So it's probably safer to use this second formula, but let's go ahead and dive on through. So we're going to find that common ratio. And again, we're going to use the second formula because we don't know the last term. Uh, let's go ahead and solve our, our a sub 1 is 8. Let's go ahead and solve our common ratio. And we're going to do 14 divided by 8 and 24 divide, 24.5 divided by 14. And we ended up with 1.75 each time. So there's our common ratio. Now we're ready to submit this into our sum formula. So F sub n is equal to uh, a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n and blah, blah, blah. So I went ahead and plugged it in. S sub n is now S sub 6 because those are my first six terms. My a sub 1 is 8. My r value is 1.75 and my n value is 6 again. So I plug it all into a calculator and I ended up with 295.71. Er, make sure your PEMDAS is in the right order. If you're using a calculator, make sure your parentheses are all in the right spot in order to force an order of operation or you yourself have to begin inside working out. So if in the calculator, you would start with 1.75 uh, raised to the sixth power and then subtract that from one and then divide by whatever one minus 1.75 is and then multiply by eight. So make sure you're doing your PEMDAS in order. All right. Um, that was example 5a. We've already solved 295.71. Let's move on to example 5b. For the indicated sum, find the nth term of a sub 1 is equal to 3 and a sub n is equal to 768. What would r be? So we, uh, sorry, a r is equal to negative 2. I think I forgot my animations on this slide. I was wondering why I had so much information up. So what do we know? We know r is equal to negative 2. They gave it to us. We know the first term and we know the last term, but we don't know the n value. Uh, so the first thing we actually have to do here before we can solve the sum, we're going to have to do a secondary solve and solve for what the heck n is. So we're going to do two equations here. We're going to start with the explicit formula for a sub n to solve what n is, and then we're going to solve our sum. So do we really need to solve for n? Check your sum equations. Um, and in fact, do we need to solve for n? So that's a good little pause I had in there. Uh, that would be what we would do for the arithmetic sequences. Do we need n in order to solve this question right down here? Well, we need n just to plug it in right here for s sub n, but beyond that, we don't need to know what n is unless it specifically asked us for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by plugging it in. a sub one is three. Uh, a sub n, or the last term, is 768 multiplied by the common ratio divided by one minus the common ratio. And we end up with 513. That's it. You're done. So moving on to infinite sums. What happens if we aren't given that final n value? 
then when we have an infinite formula, the absolute value of an R bar, R value still needs to be less than one to use this formula. So you take the first term and you divide by one minus your R value, your common ratio. So if possible, if our R value meets our terms, then find the sum. So if we have nine plus three plus one, the first thing I need to figure out is my R, and then I need to figure out my first term. So my A sub one value and my R value are the first things we gotta solve. So A sub one is nine, it's the very first term they gave me. To get R, I'm gonna take three and divide by nine, and I'm gonna take one and divide by three, and I end up with an R value of one third. So we know our R value. Let's test it out, because this is an infinite, geometric sequence. It doesn't tell me to find the first n number of terms. It doesn't mention anything about that. It just has an infinite dot, 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 and ellipses right here as my cursor is circling. It's an infinite sequence. So that means that I have to use the infinite formula, which means I have to check. Does my absolute value of r, is it less than one? Well, if I take the absolute value of one third, it's still positive one third, and that is less than one. So I can use my formula. I take the first term and I divide by one minus r. For those of you moving into calculus BC, this is an important concept to recognize as you move into your uh, integration of series, and that's a intense sequence in and of itself, but it does help to remember this formula. So I do nine minus uh, nine divided by one minus one third, and I end up with thirteen point five. That's it. That's your end answer. What if they gave it to me using sigma? What if they didn't give it to me as nine plus three plus one dot 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 dot? So that's what this question is saying. So if I had this sum, first of all, is it infinite or finite? Well, it's finite because it goes from n equals two to seven. If it had gone from n equals two to infinity, then it would have been an infinite sequence. So first of all, we have a finite sum, so I get to use my finite two formulas. And what other information did they give me? Well, if I'm looking at it, hold the phones. Doesn't that look like the explicit formula for a geometric sequence? A1, times the ratio raised to the power n minus one. That is the that is my explicit sequence. So I can go ahead and figure out all of this information right here, my common ratio, my first term, and what my n value is going to be. So if this is my explicit formula, then that means my uh, n value is going to be equal to the top of my sigma seven minus the bottom of my sigma two, and then always plus one. How else could I do that? Well, I could just count from two to seven. So if n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, n equals five, n equals six, n equals seven. So why do we always do that plus one? Because remember when we count from seven to two, if we just do seven minus two, that's only five terms. We're not actually counting either the first or the last term, typically the first one, because if we go two, then we go three, four, five, six, seven. We, we tend to start with the number three, but with sums of, um, with series and sequences, that n equals two is its own unique term value. So that's one of the reasons why we do that, upper minus lower plus one. So we know our n value, our a sub one is simply given to us, and our r value was simply given to us. Our a sub one was given to us by plugging it in. A sub one is actually equal to a sub two because we started with n equals two. So we plug in two for n and we end up with two minus one, five raised to the two minus one is still just five and five times three is 15. So they gave us all sorts of fun, juicy information. Some of you might pause and say, hold on, I thought three represented a sub one. It would if we plugged in um, n equals one. But as you see where my cursor is underneath this sigma, our n value is starting at two. So I kind of gave us a little bit of a tricky question just to go through as many questions as humanly possible. But now I know my n value, I know my first term, and I first term, our first term is actually our second term, first term, and I know my r value. So I'm ready to find the sum. So I go to my sum formulas. The sum formula I'm gonna use is this one because I don't know the last term, but I know all of this information. I plug in the first term, I plug in n equals six, and I plug in the five for my common ratio. I PEMDAS correctly, either using my calculator to with parentheses or doing it from the inside out, and then I get 58,590. Ta-da! That's my end answer. Let's do one more, and I think that's all the time I've got. So here's another one, but this one, what's the big difference? It's infinite! It's not finite. So we're going to have to do an R check. Is my absolute value of R less than one? We're good to go. So my first term is actually going to be my fourth term. 
So I'm actually going to plug in four. And so there's my A sub one, really it's A sub four. And my R value was given to me as 0.2. Well, since R is less than one, the absolute value, I can go ahead and use my infinite formula. So I plug in A sub one, all divided by one minus the ratio, and I end up with 0 0.04. And that's it. And that's all we've got time for. So uh, we just focused on how to do sums. Uh, we didn't really do any real world applications this time around. We did it in the previous video, but that's all I've got for you guys. So I will see you.